Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to show you how to use Tinkercad. Now, as an ed tech coach, I get to show hundreds of kids this program every year. And they, they range from seven-year-olds all the way up to 18-year-olds. So this could be shown for a number of reasons. Maybe they're getting into 3D printing or they're just doing 3D design. And there's so much creativity that can go in with using Tinkercad. Now, I'm gonna show you a basic tutorial to get started, to get logged in, uh, so you can show your kids uh, how to be using this in this tutorial today, but the possibilities are endless, the creativity with Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is free to use and it's just at tinkercad.com and I'll put the link down below so you can quickly go to it and I'll timestamp everything in this video so if you're looking for something in particular you can jump right to it. And at the end of this video I'll get I'll just do a little quick uh, show of how to set up your classes if you're a teacher uh, on how you would do that. But I'm going to go get logged in with my account right now. If you don't have an account you can hit join now and then just follow the uh, with the prompts that it asks you to do. It's very simple to set up an account but I'm going to hit sign in and I'm just going to hit sign in with Google and get to my account. So now I'm logged into my Tinkercad uh, account. And just to give you a little walk around this screen right here, what you're seeing, you can see my recent designs. These are just different ones I've shown. Uh, I can go back at any time and edit, it, edit any of these, that ones I've already started, just by hitting Tinker This, and then it will go in. And I can also delete any of these too. So if I click on the little settings, I can see how I have delete and delete and then it's gone. So I can also share to other people. I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, you can see on the left here, I'm gonna be focused on 3D design and basic shape manipulation in this one, uh, but there's other ones from circuits to cold block, cold blocks and we even have some lessons, but I won't look at, be looking at that in this tutorial. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new design right here. And when I create a new design, uh, notice, uh, I just want to point out, it gives you a name of the design right here. So now it says Brave Dancers, just kind of random names. I can go ahead and click in here and I can, I'm just going to say demo one and that gives me a name here. Uh, so I don't have any anything on this, it's just a work plane. This work plane, I can be looking at it from all these different angles and I'm just gonna put a uh, shape on here, a basic shape. And if I look over to the uh, right over here, you can see there's basic shapes. This is a drop down that does have a lot more. I'm gonna be just looking at these first few in this tutorial here today, but I'm gonna just pull a box I'm going to pull and drag it onto the work plane like this, just so we have an object. And what I want to do is actually show you how to get back to your main screen. If I click on Tinkercad up here, and I'm just going to click on this, and it's going to bring me back to my main screen. And you'll see I have demo one, and I have this object on here. If I uh, so it automatically saves it. I can log on in different places, different computers. I don't have to be on the same computer. I'm gonna go back and hit tinker this and it's gonna take me back uh, to uh, my last point where I was working on it. So it saves automatically uh, for you. So now I just wanna show you some basic movement of the shape and how to change your view. Uh, with this at any time, I can click on this object and I can move it around the work plane just like this. So I'm not changing the shape of it any, I'm just moving it around on the work plane. If I wanna to start to see it from a different uh, angle, look up this uh, right here in this box. So it says top and front. If I go ahead and click on top, I'm looking at the top view. Now we have these arrows where I can go around and look at the different views. So I'm looking at it from underneath. Now what I tend to do though, is I grab this box and I click and hold with my mouse and I move it around uh, and I can quickly get to where I want to. You can see how I can just really manipulate the view at any time. If you hit this home button back here, it just brings it right back to the original view. So if you get it all twisted and everything, you just want to bring it back, just do that. Uh, we have, uh, uh, a few different ones. So if I want to zoom up just to see everything fit, that's what I would do there. These are the zoom in and zoom out. I use on my mouse the wheel to go back and forth, but if you click on these, you can see how you can zoom out and zoom in. And this is just a perspective switch here. Uh, you can see how it changes the perspective when I click on this one. Now, the other thing I want to show you is uh, with this are these 
right up here. So if I have this selected, if I click off uh, of these, they're not available all of them, but if I click on the object, I have them available. This can delete your object, and I can also do that on my keyboard by hitting delete or backspace. But if I hit delete, here's my undo. So I can undo, and I'll, I also have a redo here too. So you can see the shortcuts, uh, also control Z and uh, control Y on those. I can click on this again. I also have a, a duplicate. So if I need something, if I made something and I need it to be exactly the same, I could hit duplicate and I could move it just like this and I have a duplicate now. I can also copy paste. So if I highlight both so that, notice I draw my selection tool around multiple. I am, now both of these are selected. I could go to this one and hit copy and go to this one and hit paste and now I have four of these just like that. Uh, that's just some basic shapes to get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of a few of these now and just go back to my one and select. Now you probably noticed over here on the right that uh, we have a solid color. Now when I print, if I was printing in 3D, this has nothing to do with what I would be printing because that's about the filament I put into the 3D. This is just for the design uh, aspect of it. So I could quickly change the color just like this and you can see all the different colors that you can uh, choose from transparency. You can just click on um, uh, any of these when you go through uh, if I wanted it transparent, just click like this. So I'm gonna go back to this, just leave it at this shape, and I'm gonna quickly show you can change the shape through here just by moving uh, the slider back and forth, and you can see how it adjusts uh, here. The length, uh, if I pull this, you'll see it get longer, and the width get wider, and the height, so I better zoom out so you can see how high I made this, you can see how, how big it is now. Now, I'm gonna move this back uh, a little bit so you can put it in uh, perspective and I'll change the angle so you can see everything. Now, there's a quicker way to do this uh, than this. I like to kind of grab the handles on it. I'm gonna show you what all the handles do. Now, with these black handles, we have the black handles and the white handles. If I grab, let's say this one right here, I'm gonna zoom up. If I grab this one right here, I can move this what this direction and this direction. I can't move it left or right. It only allows me to go in two directions. If I grab this one, I can go left or right. I cannot bring it up, down. I can just bring it, change it like this. Now, same, uh, if I look at the different angles here, you can see all the different ones. Notice we have the white handles. The white handles allows me, allows me to kind of do anything. If I grab this handle here, I can just change it around very quickly here. And I can even change, I'll just change the height here. And now it looks like I have a piece of cheese. We also have this little cone shape right here, this triangle. This is how I lift things up and down. So right now it's right on the work plane. So if I click on this one right here, you'll see as I drag up, this number increases. So if I wanna put something right on the work plane, that needs to be zero. If I put zero right in here, it goes back automatically. So you can type numbers in there uh, to, in order to get to exactly what you want to do. And the other handles I just wanna point out with um, are these ones if you wanna change the angle. So look at here, notice when I hover over it, I'm getting different degrees I can change it to. I can click and hold on this and I can change the angle. I'll go back to it. Sometimes it can be a little finicky grabbing it there and I change the angle. It shows me the degrees there or I could type in the angles like this. I'm gonna rotate it around. You can see that there's other angles there too. Again, at any time and sometimes it is, it is easier to type in, uh, especially if you're building something, connecting it to maybe some math curriculum if you're using angles uh, to create something you can do that. But you can click and hold these ones to rotate just like that. You can see now I have it sticking through the bottom of the plane. I can lift it up more if I wanted to, just like this. So that's some basic manipulation of using the handles or using these to change uh, the, the size, the shape. Uh, and you can do this with any of these. So if I bring this over here, you can see if I want it, you can see how quickly you can make adjustments to the shapes.
I'm not going to go through all the shapes here, but I do want to point out a couple of different ones. Uh, we have a scribble tool. So if I drag, if I just drag it over here, what we can do with the scribble tool, I could write my name or something and I'll just put a quick uh, happy face here just like this. And I'm going to click done down here and now zoom out and I have this uh, 3D drawing that I just did. And I noticed that the handles are still there. I can still manipulate it all the same way by using all the handles just like that. We also have a text tool. So if you look down right here, we have text. I, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna bring some text and we don't want it to say text. And I'm gonna move this and if I click on the text right here, I could make it say, whoops, I better click in the right spot and I'm just gonna say hello and you can change the uh, height and bevel, everything in here, just like the other ones, we can change uh, the font. Again, we can manipulate it with all the same things. Notice the handles are there. I can be lifting this up, down, rotating it like so. So those are just a couple of the uh, basic shapes I want you to point out. I uh, notice that there are text and numbers here. So if I click on text and numbers, you can do individual uh, letters that you can bring uh, onto here just like this too, if you're uh, spelling something out. So now what I wanna show you is, I'm gonna delete these. I wanna show you how you can group objects together because this is the key part about designing is taking shapes and cutting pieces out of them uh, in it and it's uh, just a three-step process so I'm just going to go back to my basic shapes here and I'm just going to take the cube here and I'm going to go back change it to my home just like this and now I'm going to take this sphere like this and I'm going to just and what I'm going to show you here is if I bring this inside like this. So I can merge these shapes together like this. I can actually even, if I uh, select both of them, notice, so I draw my selection tool over both. This is a group tool right here. So I click group. What that means, notice they went to the same color because now they're together. They're connected. So if I start to change it, it manipulates them both together. I'm just going to undo a couple steps here back to where I was. So it changed back to the color. So I know they're not group. You can see I can uh, take them apart. But let's say I want to cut this out of here. So if I want to cut this, uh, this shape in, into the cube or into the box, I'm going to select this. I'm going to turn this into a hole just like this. So you can see how it went into a hole. Now the next step would be to selecting both. I'm going to select both of these like this. And then the last step is to hit group. So as soon as I hit group, notice it took the chunk out of here. I'm going to zoom in. I took that out of there. So I went, I did the hole and then I uh, grouped it and then I selected them both and grouped them and I took the chunk out of whatever was the hole, took the chunk out of the other one. So you can really start to manipulate shapes by using that feature of the hole. So let's give you a little building exercise here. I just have this one object here, you can see. I'm gonna use this as a wall. I'm gonna build a quick house with a few different things. I'm gonna cut a hole as a door in it. So first of all, I need three more walls. I could do a floor, but I'm not gonna go in this example. And the quick way I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this. So I'm gonna keep duplicating so I get uh, four just like that, and I have four. Now I'm gonna take one of these and I wanna rotate it. Now I could grab but I know I, if I rotate 90 degrees, it will be just like this. So I'm gonna change my perspective again and I'm gonna line up these walls right to here. And you always need to be changing around because what you see in one angle might not be the right. So you can see right there, that doesn't match quite up with that. So I'm gonna drag this down right to there. So I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna take this one and I want to rotate it to 90 degrees like this. I'm hit enter and I'm gonna take this wall and it should be the right size right here. So now I have, and I, if I zoom up, I can test to see everything's looking okay. I could change around and I'll leave it like this. This will be fine for the example that we have here. So I've made this little box. Maybe I want a roof on it. I'm gonna change the angle to this. Again, I'm gonna to go to 90 this way just to show you a different way. You could drag it. I like just typing in the number. I'm gonna lift this up, drag this over, 
And again, I have to keep changing my perspective because I won't know. You can see that's what I mean. You have to be looking where you want to put it. So if I drag the size larger like this, do I want some overhang? We'll give it a little overhang like so. And now you can see it's way off still. I need to use this one and bring it down. Now I could bring it in, I can bring it over, but you have to keep changing your perspective to know what's happening. So make sure you're telling the kids that as they go through. So I would, I'm gonna just try to do it a little bit better than this, but I'm not gonna worry for this example too much. I'm gonna just make this a little bit larger just like that. Okay, so then I wanted a door in here. So this is where I have to make a hole. Now I could use, I'm gonna make a cube here and I'm gonna make this just a little shorter here and I need a little skinnier. And we'll say that's about a door size. I'm gonna push this right through the wall and I'm actually gonna make this a different color so you can see. And I have this actually sticking through the wall to make sure that it's going all the way through. If I wanted a door on the other side, I could. So now if I just take this and go whole, I need to select this and then I hit group. You can see now I have a door just like that. Now I can grab everything here and go ahead and group it. So now I don't have to worry about pulling one uh, piece out of the other and I can size things too. So I could just grab it, I could stretch it out this way I could uh, make it taller and you can easy, easily manipulate it together. So that's just a little thing if you want to try kind of putting things together that way. Again, let your imagination add windows, add more things, make a castle. But I just wanted to show you an example of the different ways you could be building. So just a couple more things I want to show you before I show you how to set up the class inside Tinkercad. I mean, need a uh, just an object here. And it is the snap grid and the ruler. So if I look at the snap grid right now, it's at one uh, millimeter. What that means, I'm, I'm gonna zoom up. If I move, notice how it just snaps at one millimeter at a time. If I move this, if I want it to be five millimeters, then it snaps at the half centimeter. Each of these blocks is a centimeter and it just snaps so depending on where you want to be placing, if you want to be moving, you know, it defaults to one, but you can see now it just moves over one at a time. Uh, the other thing I want to show you, there is a ruler that I can bring over here. If I wanted to uh, measure things, this can help measuring because if you're giving uh, students projects to recreate something that's authentic, that may be solving a problem, they have to design something and they need actual measurements, this can help them do this. Uh, I'm gonna bring in another object here. I'm gonna just close this ruler because I don't need it. And just a few different things. There's a few different views you can look at. Uh, this is kind of a Minecraft view. You can't work in these ones, you can just view. So after you create something, you can take a look at it. And there's also uh, a Lego view, just like that. And then you can go back uh, to where we were editing our shapes. Now you can collaborate with other people. So if we hit the plus here, uh, we could generate a link and then copy this link and send it through email uh, and then they could open it up also. And let's say you're gonna 3D print. What do you do if you're gonna 3D print? You go and create something. What you would need to do is export this like this and then you would export it as an STL and then you would say open it in a different, in a slicer program and I can go into a different video about that and then you would open uh, that up uh, and it would slice through it and then it would get ready for the uh, 3D printing. But I'll, I just wanted to make sure you knew where that was. So that gives you kind of a brief overview of how to use Tinkercad here and I kind of just touched the surface of it but I just want to show you lastly how to kind of set up of a class if you're a teacher looking to add your students. If you are a teacher, I do recommend setting it up as a class. It just makes it easier to view all the students' projects. I'm just back here at the start screen. I'm gonna go up top to classes. And I've already created a class, just an example class called grade four in here uh, to create new classes. Just go ahead and hit uh, create new. Uh, you can click in here uh, and you'll see I added one student called Trevor in here. I could add more students uh, just by clicking in here and typing the names. So how do they join? Uh, so what we have here, we have a class code 
And I'm going to show you a couple different ways uh, that you can do this and they make it easy to explain. You can see you have a, a class link. So if you're using something like Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams, you could uh, uh, put the code or put this URL over and they could click on it and all they would know have to know is their nickname that gets generated when you add them to the class. Or if you have a class code, which is this class code, you can copy paste it somewhere, uh, enter it in and then enter the nickname, but you can see the URLs there. I'm just going to go back. I just wanted to point uh, out here, it says Tinker class, uh, classrooms have been updated. If you look, uh, you can join class. They kind of walk you through this right here, how it works for the students without accounts. So join the class, nickname, and done. That's kind of what I just showed you. But some students might have an account and you want to have them join your class. You can get them to sign in, then join class uh, with the class code for the students. So if they already created one through Google, they could still join your classroom. But just take a look at how they add. And remember, uh, just to go to classes and you'll kind of see that information where you can easily add your students. And there's other things like your lesson plans and everything there that you can kind of look through for more examples. So I I do recommend trying uh, taking your cat out. Like I said, I've used this for a grade two to 12. Uh, kids love this. They get engaged right away um, on this program and it sets up even if you're looking at going into some 3D printing and there's still more things to work on than what I've showed you here today. Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.